You're listening to WCOM LP 103.5 FM Carborough and Chapel Hill. It's a Tuesday, it's five o'clock, and that only means one thing. It's time for another round of Snarky Faith with your host, Stuart Deloney. This is a space where we irreverently wrestle through life, culture, and spirituality, all with our heads in the clouds, our tongues in our cheeks, our hearts in our sleeves, and our feet on the ground. At Snarky Faith, the questions or even the answers are never the point. It's all about the conversation. So here's your host, Stuart Deloney. Well, good afternoon and welcome to another round of Snarky Faith Radio. I'm your host, Stuart Deloney. And hey, I'm excited to be here another week to sit down with you guys. And this show, this show in particular today, is going to be quite, quite action-packed. Uh, it's very action-packed because we're going to be sitting down and having a, an interesting conversation with author extraordinaire Keith Giles. We're going to be sitting down talking about a new course that he is piloting, and we're going to talk a bit about deconstruction, too. Now, that being said, before we get to that point, we've got a lot to cram in. So, if you're new to this show and you like what you see, not really, maybe you like what you hear, uh, and you want to find out more about this, you can find <laughs> you can find this show and past shows anywhere they host podcasts. Just look up Snarky Faith, and you can also find out more information about the show at www.snarkyfaith.com. Good, good. All that stuff out of the way. There's a lot to talk about. But here's how I want to begin the show. I want to begin the show with something that I don't think you'd thought that I would be saying, or at least like this, 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 this conglomeration of words, like these, these particular words in this order uh, that I don't think I could have expected to be saying this, but dang it, today we need a really a heaping load right now of some saucy, some saucy Beth Moore. Right? Who doesn't want some saucy Beth Moore? Right? Who thinks that? No, no. But you do. I'm telling you right now, you do. Beth Moore was dropping some truth bombs on Twitter, and it was beautiful. It was quite beautiful. So let's just, I'll give you a taste of her truth telling, because it is quite wonderful. She said this, I do not believe these are the days for mincing words. I'm 63 and a half years old, and I've never seen anything in these United States of America, I found more astonish- astonishing, nearly seductive and dangerous to the saints of God than Trumpism. This Christian nationalism is not God. Move back from it. Fellow leaders, we will be held responsible for remaining passive in this day of seduction to save our own skin, while the saints we've been entrusted to serve are being seduced, manipulated, used, and stirred up into a lather of zeal, devoid of the Holy Spirit for political gain. And God help us. God help us that we don't turn from Trumpism to Bidenism. We do not worship flesh and blood. We do not place our faith in mortals. We are a church of the living God. We can't sanctify idolatry by labeling a leader our Cyrus. We need no Cyrus. We have a king, and his name is Jesus. Can I get an amen for Beth Moore? That's, again, not a, a bunch of words in order that I normally use on a regular basis. But hey, I may not be a fan of all of her curriculum, but girlfriend, you're on the pulse right now, and I love it. Love it. I think you should love it, too. And before we get into too much frivolity, I do want to remind you guys that are listeners here, if you missed last week's episode, I want you to go to our website, snarkyfaith.com. It's on the front page, uh, the episode Help Save Muhammad Kamran, uh, where where I interviewed Muhammad Kamran, who is an interpreter in Afghanistan with the U.S. troops uh, during the war on terror and who's now living in hiding with his family in Pakistan. Uh, The U.S. has stymied any of their relief to be able to help him, but we are trying to get the word out. So go to www.snarkyfaith.com, look up Help Save Muhammad Kamran. We've got an entire show about this, and there's a bunch of links available on the website, ways to be able to help and contribute to them during the season. We would just love to be able to see this family brought to a safe place. So check it out. 
moving on from that, one of the tenets of our show here on Snarky Faith is that we like to point out the insanity within Christianity uh, in America so that we can be able to hopefully take that and say, hey, that's not really what Jesus intended, but let's just make fun of it for now. So that, yes, that's what we're going to hop into in our segment we called The Christian Crazy of the Week. Let's go. Claude Hammers, the Lord is my shepherd. He know what I want. To. Well, first up in The Christian Crazy, we've got the OG of Nutter Butters in the Christian faith. That's right. Give it up to Jim Baker. But you know, I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried, even though I know we're going to get more to this in a minute, but I know that a lot of like conservative and insane Christianity right now is, is really kind of stuck in a rut because they're, they're busy saying that Trump still won, Trump still won, Trump still won. And, but at the same time, Trump keeps losing. He just keeps losing. And I think this is I think the facade is beginning to come down just slowly, just ever so much. Kind of just like, just the facade is just leaking, kind of like Rudy Giuliani, kind of just drip dripping, just ever so slowly. Because I'm going to say, I think Jim Baker is off his game. He's just a little off his game because I just think he's a little down at the dumps because, well, let me just go ahead and let you take case in point number one. This is where we are. This is what... What comes after this election? This is what God spoke to my heart, that if we do not reelect elect the President Trump, a man who take, took a stand, you know, against abortion, mm -hmm. he took a stand ag against anti-Christ stuff and all the things that were going on. Wait, wait a second there, Jim. Let's pump the brakes. Antichrist stuff and things like that he was involved in? Are we just phoning it in now? Antichrist stuff? I mean, come on, come on. No mark of the beast? No? No tribulation? No? Just Antichrist stuff. I mean, come on, work in vaccinations. You can do it. There's so many conspiracies that, I mean, you've even floated. Just grab one, grab one, just grab one, man. Get it, get it, get it. They're all there. Antichrist stuff. I mean, that's just sad. That's just even sad for like on a televangelist level. That's just plain sad. And you know, you know what? All right, that's it for Jim today. That's it. That's it. Jim didn't show up to play ball today, so that's all the time he gets on the Christian crazy. This ain't the Bush League's people. Because we got plenty more crazy up. So you may ask me, Stuart, how are the crazy Christians handling things post-election? And I'll tell you, they're handling things extremely not well. Not well. I think... I think we should actually, first of all, just listen to Mario Murillo here and, and see what Mario has to say about how we should be looking at this right now. Because, you know, Mario and reality go not hand in hand. I'm going to say this, that Joe Biden is president is the conspiracy theory, not the Dominion voting, not all of the corruption that we're uncovering. The conspiracy theory, the tinfoil cone hat theory, is that Joe Biden is the legitimate president of the United States. Get that. Now, here's what you, you're doing. The Bible says not to fear their conspiracy theories, but right. to fear the Lord. Well, let me just give uh, Mario here actually a tiny bit of props. Out of context props, but I want to give credit where credit's due. We shouldn't fear conspiracy theories. We shouldn't listen to them. We shouldn't touch them. We shouldn't even get anywhere near conspiracy theories. And should we fear the Lord? Ah, I don't know about that, but I kind of would say, like, if we're trying to wrestle something out of what this bag of nothing and what he's trying to say is this. Hey, let's lean more towards God and not conspiracy theories because people that peddle them like Mario are... Nuts. 
they're absolutely nuts. I mean, if we're going to be honest, let's just be honest. This isn't like a meet somewhere in the middle kind of nuts here, right? Like where he's like, oh, he's just like a little to the side of the spectrum here on me. No, no, no. He's nuts. He's gone. He is <whistles> over the cuckoo's nest. And oh, is it fun? Because guess what? Mario's about to tell you not to believe in the stuff you see here, you know, the kind of things like matter, like in front of you, not like what matters to us, like literal matter, like we, we can see, feel, touch, hear, taste, and sense, you know, those kind of things to where, no, 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 the spiritual realm tells us all of that crap is BS. No, just listen to Mario. And then he will be a sanctuary. Now think about this. When we're looking at that moment when God said to the Israelites, we've got to say this to you watching now. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit and give in to fear, God is going to judge you. God is going to correct you for that. If you're giving in and you're one of those that voted for Biden, you're one of those that is kind of using cheap grace as an excuse to accept this cultural change and say, well, let's be loving. God is going to judge you because what happened is they wandered in the wilderness and God made up his mind. He said, they will never go into my promised land. He said, he had made up his mind already. I'm just waiting for you to die. And there is a sheep part of the body of Christ right now, and there is a goat. And right now, this is a test. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a test. Yeah. It's a test of whether you're going to stand on the word or go by what you see. If you're going to believe the lies, or are you going to understand that it would make no sense for such a verbatim prophecy as the third Supreme Court justice being a woman of compassion that he gave in October 20s, it would make no sense for that part to be true and the part about the corruption being exposed not to be true. That's what you've got to hang your life on right now. You've got to be loyal to God in this hour and not give in. Oh, Mario! Poor Mario. I actually forgot Mario in the Old Testament where it was. Oh, the children of Israel were in the desert and Moses goes on the mountain and he comes down and everyone's like, is it, is it Hillary or is it Trump? And then people are like, Aah! let's like make a golden calf because none of, what is he even talking about? That somehow, yes, the way you vote is going to separate you. And the Lord only cares about really circumstantial things because God is tiny and a little petty bitch like Mario is, apparently. And, and ultimately, though, at the end of the day, we do have to remember everything that Mario says needs to be true because if his prophecies aren't true, he's a crock of shit. which I think that we've just proven him to be. Hmm, we did a good thing today in the Christian Crazy. High five! Thanks so much, Mario, for that after-school special moment. We all learned something, and, you know, I'll kind of take this with me as I move into the future. Now, when we kind of move on to how the other side is handling things right now we've also got kind of the defiant branch of that we've got the michelle bachman idea where hey if i don't like it then nobody likes it if my opinion that the election has besmirched what i thought it should be then my opinion equals the rest of america because that's kind of how things work <laughs> oh, the simpleton. Michelle, go ahead. What do you have to say? You're adorable. From the political point of view, from the legal point of view, from the moral point of view, America is not on board with Joe Biden as the next president of the United States. We're not there. And the reason why we're not there is because we're not that dumb in the United States, because we know without a shadow of a doubt, this man did not get the votes on election night. It didn't happen. <laughs> Donald Trump got the votes on election night. So why would we be like drones, chumps, and fools to go along with this? I mean, you're right. I mean, you wouldn't want to sound like a drone, a chump, a fool, and go along with it at all. I mean, I can 
make other lists of words like you wouldn't want to be a blockhead, a bonehead, a cretin, a dimwit, a dork, a dumbbell, a dunce, an ignoramus, an imbecile, a kook, a muttonhead, nincompoop, a ninny, a pinhead, a simpleton, a tomfool, or out for lunch. And now I'm hungry. No, you wouldn't want to be seen as a complete moron that is looking at the way the world is. And believing an entire lie. Which should also beg the question, eh, if their faith is that thin that you have to continue to stretch reality in order to somehow make their faith connect and work, what are you doing anymore? I mean, it really just sounds like it's a lot of work and it's not even worth it. Because as the famous theologian Thomas Petty said, it's time to get on. It's time to get going. What lies ahead? I got no way of knowing. Move along, children. The longer you stay here, your idolatry is showing. Zip it up. No one wants to see your idolatry. It's disgusting. But you know what's more disgusting? Pastors telling their church that they should not get vaccinated because God covers them. Don't believe me, Guillermo Maldonado. He can lie in two languages. He's bilingual. So let's hear what he has to lie for us. People, I want you to look at me. That is exactly what is happening with COVID-19. Eso es exactamente lo que está pasando con el COVID-19. They prepare in the structure for the Antichrist. Están preparando la estructura para el Anticristo. How? How? ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? The vaccine. La vacuna. They're going to demand for you to have the vaccine in your passport Van and seal it. I will guarantee you, there's no way I can prove this, that, that Guillermo Maldonado will get a vaccine. He is a rich man. He cares about himself but he doesn't care about his followers because really all he cares about is just pushing a narrative forward, right? Ugh, if only I could master selling my soul, then I could actually make money off faith. <laughs> what an idea. What an idea. And yet what a fool I am for continuing to speak the truth and hang out with you guys because that's kind of where I'd rather be. And what I've learned in this journey of moving away from a lot of the Christian industrial complex BS, where everything's about making celebrity pastors and making other people famous and other people rich. Yeah, yeah. I've got no interest in that. I don't think you do either. If you've hung around the show long enough, you know we don't care about that. We care about good conversations. And we've got one here for you this hour. So we're going to hop in with my conversation with the man, the myth, the legend, Keith Giles. Joining us today is Keith Giles. Keith was formerly a pastor who walked away from the organized church over a decade ago to start a home fellowship that gave away 100% of the offerings to the poor in the community. Today, uh, Keith is the author of the best-selling Jesus Un series of books, Jesus Unexpected, Ending the End Times to Become the Second Coming, uh, which is available right now on Amazon. Uh, Keith's also the host of the Heretic Happy Hour, amongst many things else. Keith, welcome. Welcome to the show. Hey, Stuart. Thank you so much, man. I'm excited to be here. Well, Keith, you are a busy man and a prolific author, um, and which is funny because all that stuff I just mentioned, we're not going to really talk about that a ton today. Uh, no. <laughs> we've got other stuff to talk about. Um, yeah. Uh, but keeping in mind, you know, there may be some shameless plugs that happen here and there on the show um, <laughs> for you. Um, but today, I'm going to talk about one of your, your other ventures, um, some of the coaching. Yeah. Would you call it coaching and counseling and courses, I guess, kind of how you've, you've yeah, set this up? Yeah, yeah. I guess it's kind of, in a way, it's sort of, yeah, counseling uh, from the deconstruction side of things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so what I wanted to do, too, and kind of put on that professor hat for you, um, as, we, as we kind of get a, a, a working definition of deconstruction, so we're going to be talking a little about deconstruction with Keith. So Keith, kind of educate us here. Give us some words to work with. Yeah. Oh, like what is deconstruction? Yeah, yes. I think, yeah. Um, well, deconstruction, uh, you and I were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, deconstruction is something where it's sort of, I think people who are going through it, it just sort of happens to you. You sort of like, 
you kind of just, you know, da, 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 you're going along and you read a book or, or you watch a video or you hear a presentation or something happens and it starts pulling a thread on something that you believed. And it's, by the way, it can be different. It's always different for everybody, whatever that first domino is that starts the process. But um, once you start pulling on that thread or that first domino starts to fall, like whatever it happens to be, uh, it usually leads to, well, but then what, if that's not true, then what about this? And then you look into that, well, oh my gosh, well, that means that this might not be true either. And people, people going through deconstruction um, feel kind of helpless. And I know this because when I talk to people that are going through deconstruction, one of the main things they'll ask me is, is when does it end? <laughs> Which means they feel out of control yeah. there. It's just, it's something that's happening to them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it can be, it creates a lot of anxiety and fear and pain. And we can get into that in a minute. Um, but so yeah, deconstruction is just sort of this thing that begins to happen when you start to, to question things you've been told were true. And you start realizing that some of the things that you maybe based your uh, faith on, and therefore even sometimes your identity on uh, may not be true. And then that can be really scary. Mm -hmm. Now, what about you? Um, tell me a little about your journey, because I think that, you know, anytime we talk about this kind of stuff, it's always helpful to be able to hear what happened to you along the road. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so my deconstruction started, um, I was on staff at this church, oh man, probably 15 or so years ago, and um, it's a church my wife, Wendy, and I had helped to plant with some friends of ours, and we'd never planted a church before. This was in Southern California. And um, for the most part, that experience was really wonderful. It was really, really great and challenging. And, you know, it was a great experience. But um, after about three and a half years of that experience, um, the first real sort of thread that got pulled, although to me it felt like a hammer <laughs> over my head, um, was uh, someone pointed out to me that something I'd never seen before, which was that the gospel was not about saying a prayer so I could go to heaven when I die. And I was a licensed entertained pastor, had been for over a decade. That's what I thought the gospel was. And so realizing that the gospel was not what I thought it was, totally rearranged the spiritual furniture in my heart and my mind. And that was the beginning. Like that, that first little drop in the in the ocean was the sent out these ripples that caused me to then eventually question what I believed about um church, about salvation, about Christianity, um, and then it led to questioning things about the Bible, and you know, just kind of kept going. So that was what started it for me. Um, and then I rec and then I got to experience how painful that whole process and and how scary that process can really be. It is it is a difficult one to enter into, and it's even harder, especially when I mean, you were mentioning this too at the time you're married, um, and so and so being able to walk through that can be an incredibly well, it can be incredibly painful. It can be exciting, but it is a lot of. There's a lot of wrestling. Um, yeah, <laughs> and a lot yeah, of, a lot of and contending, a lot of a uncertainty. Lot of, yeah, and yes. especially you know having having been a um, at the time when I was going through it. I, at the time, you know, like a, a large portion of my income came from being an on staff pastor at a church. Mm -hmm. um, what ultimately ended up happening was, you know, because I felt called away from. I just was convicted of the things I was doing, and even. Uh, being on staff as a pastor, I just didn't feel comfortable anymore that I could do that. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up walking away from that. And that's really hard to do as a pastor when you're deconstructing your beliefs and your beliefs lead you to um, make decisions that, you know, kind of are, don't kind of go against your own self-interest. Like I still needed to pay my bills and yeah. provide for my wife and my kids, but yet I didn't feel like in good conscience I could continue to do that. Uh, being an on-staff pastor. And so I did step away and I spent a year um, with no full-time employment. I was a contract worker. I mean, I mean, we lived by faith month to month for a year until we figured out where to land and how to make this thing make sense. So that's just one example of how deconstruction, especially if you're a pastor, it can be even more challenging and create even, I mean, deconstruction is hard enough without, you know, losing your job over it. So well, that, let's use that as a launching point too, because you just mentioned pastors too. Um, because yeah. one of one a course that you have coming up in is it January? Is that correct? Yeah, January sixteenth and seventeenth. Sixteenth yeah. and seventeenth is Ground Zero Renew. That's specifically yeah. for pastors. Now, give us a snapshot of what that is looking like. Yeah, exactly. So, um, um, maybe we'll talk about this a little bit in more detail coming up. But um, 
it started because like about over a year ago, um, I started this course called Square One that was actually specifically targeted to helping people in general who are deconstructing go from deconstruction into the reconstruction process, um, which again, because I didn't at the time see anything out there focused on the reconstruction part of it, which is a much, you know, it's its own thing. So anyway, I've been doing that for a year and a half. And having done that for a year and a half, what I started noticing was there was a lot of pastors in this course. Um, a lot of people who literally would say to me verbatim, Keith, um, if my congregation knew that I was in this course or that I was deconstructing these beliefs, I would lose my job. And um, so after seeing this happen over and over and over again, I realized there's not only is there nothing out there devoted to the reconstruction phase of the deconstruction process, which is what square one was doing, there was nothing. And there is, as far as I know, still nothing devoted to helping pastors specifically uh, who are deconstructing. Because as I said, and I know this from experience, deconstructing is really hard just in general, but to go through deconstruction as a pastor is 10 times harder. And so I just wanted to provide something that would specifically help pastors or former pastors mm -hmm. who have deconstructed their faith um, to do a couple things. One, to provide a community. So there's a community aspect to this. It's not just a little weekend course um, that you can take, um, but it's also a, a private Facebook group community of all of other pastors like yourself, if you're a pastor. Um, because again, pastors are isolated. Pastors can't talk to other pastors even in their own zip code because there's this feeling of like it's going to leak out. Someone's going to find out, and then I'm going to lose my job. Right? You're just, just you're always constantly afraid that someone's going to find out. So you you don't need to talk to other pastors about this, mm -hmm. and it just creates this intense feeling of isolation that you and only you are going through this. But you're not alone because I, I know you're not because I know I've, I've contacted so many pastors over the last 15 years. Uh, I know that this is not uncommon. So I wanted to provide the community aspect to connect pastors to other pastors so that they can help each other through this process. Um, and then also just to provide some really great, helpful content. So um, if I can, real quick, the, the, the first, this is, and I'll, I'll say it's the first because it's not going to be the only one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be continuing to provide um, more content for the Renew community. Um, but this this first one in January... Um, I'm having, I have conversations with, um, pastors or, and former pastors who have deconstructed. So these are people like Alan Smith, uh, Richard Jacobson, uh, December Rose, um, gosh, who, who else? I'm, I'm blanking here. Um, I have to look at my list here. Spencer Burke, uh, Jason Elam. Um, and then my friend, Lisa Martinez, who is not a pastor, but she is, she knows what it's like to be uh, sort of a reluctant spiritual guru to people <laughs> and the uh, challenges associated with that. So those are the first six conversations that we'll have uh, in January with many more to come. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that, that's really exciting that you're being able to to provide this because you're right. Um, I, oh, gosh, I'm trying to even think back. <laughs> Going through, I mean, I feel like, I don't know. And maybe you can tell me I'm wrong. The way I felt like it's, I feel like I'm always going through like a process of deconstruction and reconstruction. Like yes. it, it's always finding more, like there's always more, there's yes. more to do. There's more as, as you continue moving on. Like you'd mentioned someone earlier saying, when is it finished? Uh, yes. <laughs> and I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that's, and you make it, you make a good point there, Stuart, because I mean, that, that is right. I think we have a misconception sometimes about deconstruction that well, first I'm going to go through the deconstruction phase and then that will end. And then yeah. I'll flip the switch and yeah. move into this reconstruction phase. And that's yeah. not the truth. The reality is, and this is the bad news, and I'm sorry to say if you're going through deconstruction, here's the bad news. The answer to the question, when does it end, is never. Um, or I would say, actually, it's maybe it's good news. Uh, it, you should never reach a place, I would say, mm -hmm. where the things you believe, where the cement, you allow the cement to harden mm -hmm on your belief systems. I think what we should learn through the deconstruction process is the, the we should develop a skill that allows us to hold loosely mm -hmm. to the things that we think we believe. That in other words, we need to embrace mystery mm -hmm. again. We need to move back to move away from certainty, move away from um having all the answers because no one does. Mm -hmm. We don't have the answers. We we think we know, we don't know. Um, but, the, you know, so to reach a place where we're comfortable with uh, embracing mystery, mm -hmm. we're comfortable saying, I think 
mm-hmm. or right now I believe this, but it's recognizing that, um, I mean, again, I don't know about you, but in my experience, there are things I believe now that I did not believe five years of ago. Of course, yes. <laughs> and, and I hope that five years from now, I have continued to think mm-hmm. and reconsider and, and be open to new ideas mm-hmm. to the point there's some things I believe now that five years from now, I'm going to say, yeah, not, not so much. I don't believe that anymore. And I've shifted. And so again, it's that's only possible if I am open to acknowledging that uh, at this very moment, I could be wrong. In fact, let's just admit it. I probably am wrong about some things. Because why? Because I've been wrong before. Mm-hmm. And uh, and at the time, I thought I was right. Um, so, I, But I wasn't. So, you know, again, I think we need to understand that part of the deconstruction mm-hmm. process. Um, it doesn't really ever. So deconstruction and reconstruction are sort of parallel lines. You're going to deconstruct, but as you're deconstructing, you should be able to reach a place where you could say, all right, I've deconstructed that. How do I now intentionally, and there's a lot of intention involved with reconstruction, how do I intentionally reconstruct my faith? Um, so I don't believe this, but what do I believe, mm-hmm. right? No, and I think that's it's hugely important because too often, and we were mentioning this earlier before the show, I've at a certain point, deconstruction can become really fun. Um, you know, after I feel like after there, there, there's, there, there's like there's like a pain part of it, and I think yeah. once you kind of get over that pain part of letting go, then you can almost become like you're I don't know I feel like you're an arsonist. You just start burning things. You're just like ah, get rid of it. <laughs> and but at some point, then you're just surrounded with a lot of nothing. That's right. <laughs> Which is important. Why why this that why I really appreciate what you're doing here is uh, giving people tools to be able to say okay wait. Now you're now we have to start building something back up. It's not just right. uh, because too often I feel like people le- leave faith and just become cynical, and they just they they're yeah. just they're just cynical and they just dig at everything, but they never hold anything anymore. Um, That's right. Uh, whether how loosely they don't hold up anything, and then that I feel like becomes That's more right. of a sad existence. Now with this first uh, weekend course, what's the format for this like? Is it do you have to be there? Is it live or is it something that's recorded? How? It, yeah, How's it's a little bit of both. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of both. Um, by the way, this is, you're the first person I've ever explained, this, talked to about this. So I, I get to explain what is this and how does this work? So thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah, so um, the six presentations uh, with the people I mentioned, they're already recorded and they're they're done mm-hmm. and they're uploaded and ready to go. Um, so if you registered for this and you're a pastor and you registered for this on January, starting on January 16th, uh, the first three uh, you know, discussions would unlock. You would watch those at your convenience. Um, and then uh, the next day on the 17th, the next three would unlock and you'd watch those. Uh, but, I, but I'm but i going to include sort of a, a live Zoom panel discussion with hopefully, if I can get all of those people at the same time, great. But if there's only two or three or four of us, you know, that can get together. Uh, and that will be, that'll be included as part of the registration. So uh, you'll be invited to that. And then you can ask questions like, hey, I really loved what you said about in this, you know, blah, 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 but I, I don't understand this other thing. So it'll be an open discussion uh, as well. And then, of course, the um, the, the Facebook group uh, as, a, as a private group is something where it's, you know, you're free to post and share and ask questions and share resources with people uh, on that as well. So if people are interested in this, um, how do they sign up? How do they find it? Where do they go? Right. So, um, well, hopefully you you can share the link as well. Yep, yep. I don't know if you can do that in your show notes. That'd yep. be great because uh, it's kind of hard to, to to verbally explain it. But okay. it's okay. So because what I started originally was was called Square One, mm-hmm. uh, the website is is uh, back to Square One, but it's BK two the number two uh, SQ one dot com. So BK two SQ one. Dot com and if you go there you'll see all of the things I've offered on that website uh you know square one and ground zero and all these other things and then, but then at the top you'll see the ground zero renew uh, and it's only 1999 I tried to make this something super affordable um, but if for some reason that is beyond your ability to pay and listen like I said I was out of work for a year I understand sometimes twenty dollars is a lot of money it's like should I you know buy groceries or or, or go to the stupid thing of the weekend uh online so Hey, if whatever you can't afford it, um, I'm happy to to gift it because I, I, I've been very blessed. Someone came to me and basically sponsored uh, ten seats for Ground Zero Renew uh, because they were so excited about this and like, hey, I want as many pastors as possible to be able to do this. You know, so 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to offer 10 uh, free seats to people who can't afford it. Um, and uh, I'll also share that information with you as well. Yes, yes. We'll have we'll have all this on the show notes um, on the website and everything else, too. That'll oh. go out with this, too. Good. Now, um, now you have some other of these weekend uh, courses planned. So give us a little snapshot. Yeah. Of what's coming up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just sort of a coming coming attractions, I guess, because um, these are all in various stages of being created at the moment. Mm-hmm. So when I came up with the idea for the renew uh, weekend thing, I thought, well, you know, there's there are other a couple of other things I'd like to do um, that I kind of also don't see being done in the sort of deconstruction reconstruction space. That could be more of these sort of weekend things, and I would do them quarterly. So. Um, in March, uh, I'm planning to re- release one called Accelerate. These features uh, 100% women, female voices. Um, that one is mostly recorded as well. Uh, that's Kristen DeMay, Leon Hooper, Nora Sophia, Brenda Davies, uh, Iris Poiser, and uh, Dr. Katie Valentine, who was my co-host for the Heritage Cap Yard. Um, that'll be in March. It's called Accelerate. Um, and probably sometime in the summer, I'm going to be launching what's called Ground Zero Academy, and this is more like the deeper theological questions that people wrestle with. Uh, what I have set up so far, some of it recorded, some of it just scheduled is, um, so, you know, some of this may change, but we'll see. Uh, Dr. Scott Barchi, Matthew Reeves Corpman, Peter N, Steve McVeigh, uh, Crystal McCurlin, David Bentley Hart, Baxter Kruger, and who knows, we we'll may add a few other people to the list as we go forward. So uh, that'll be in the summer. And then near the end of the year, the fourth quarter of this year, this is the one that's the least developed, but I do see it as a as, as a need that right now is not being met. Mm-hmm. Um, and that and I'm calling it yoked at the moment. And what, what it's going to try to address is, again, something I run into a lot, where uh, one person in a marriage or relationship is highly deconstructing, and the other spouse is not. <laughs> uh, totally loves their church, believes the Bible is perfectly inspired, has no problem with eternal torment, like isn't questioning anything at all. And, but, but, you know, so, but if you're going through deconstruction and you're questioning and doubting everything, but you're the other person in the relationship is not, uh, it creates an, a tremendous amount of strain on that marriage or that, or on that relationship. And so my goal would be with yoked would be to have conversations with people um, who can really help us process that through. How do we do this? How do we, how do we deconstruct and how do we maintain a relationship with someone who's not deconstructing? Mm-hmm. No, I think that's, that's huge. Um, and you had described this to me earlier that, that these are kind of entry points um, yes. into the larger square one um, course community. What, how, now tell us just a little bit about that too. Tell me about square one. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So square one, that is um, yes. Yeah, square one is something Again, that's what I started with. It's more of so Square One is a it's a 90-day online course and community. Uh, so um, Square One has pre-recorded lectures on specific topics that I've already recorded that walk us through sort of the first half of it walks us through the deconstruction part of it. Uh, so there's a lecture every week. There's homework to do that you're expected to do during the week. And at the end of every week, there's a live Zoom call with everyone in the course where we just set a check-in. Uh, what did you think about the content? Did you do the homework? What was the result? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did it help? Did it not help? We just talk and process through it together. Mm-hmm. Um, and, we, and so basically, I'm walking with you and the other 15 people in Square One going through it at that time for 90 days. And we walk through the deconstruction process, and then the second half is shifting over to the reconstruction side of things. And we walk through the reconstruction piece together. There's also still a private Facebook group uh, for everyone going through square one as well. And by the way, after the course is over, you're still in that group forever. Uh, you still have access to all those lectures, you know, going forward. And you don't, you know, it's, when the course is over, it doesn't end. Um, and so uh, that's square one. And then I've added, just recently added a square two component. It's just because people who had gone through square one loved it so much. And they were like, we don't want to stop. Can we keep talking and can we keep having, you know, conversations? So uh, with the help of people who went through square one, we identified some sort of gaps that weren't covered in square one Mm -hmm. um, topic wise. And so I recorded some conversations with people for square two. Uh, Square two at this point anyway, is only for people that have completed square one. Um, 
but it's, I got to say, I think it's 10 times better than square one. It's like so amazing. <laughs> I, I, I love going through square two with everybody. Um, it's, it's, I, I can't even tell you. It's so amazing. Mm. So, uh, cause it, that's also a conversation. So like square two, uh, if I can find my list, like square two is more, so square one is more me, just me kind of giving the lectures every week mm. on the weekly lessons in square two, those weekly videos that you watch. And again, it's 90 days. Mm-hmm. Um, those are, these are conversations I'm having with people like Jim Palmer, Brad Jerzak, Brian Zahn, Mark Harris, John Lynch, uh, Bruxy KB, Baxter Kruger, Paul Young, Andre Rabe. I don't think I missed anybody. There are some amazing people that we are having some deep, incredible conversations uh, about, you know, how do we pray after deconstruction and reconstruction? Uh, what about penal substitutionary atonement, the wrath of God? I mean, these are cool, amazing conversations. So that's square two. And then square three, which I just added a couple months ago, square three is just a weekly Zoom call uh, for everyone who's been through one and two and just con- wants to continue the conversation. And those are open-ended. Basically, every week we decide, what do you, got, what's, what do you guys want to talk about? Mm-hmm. And we just talk about whatever uh, the group wants to discuss. Um, so anyway, yeah, that, that's, that's the square one, two, and three sort of ecosystem. Gotcha. So, okay, we've talked about this, this beautiful thing that you have set up you know, for people that start going through this. Now, let's just do the flip side. So what, <laughs> let's talk about, because there's pastors out there that may be listening to this that will kind sure. of, you know, they're, they're dipping their toes in the water. What is it like? What does a repressed deconstruction <laughs> look like? Does it cause hernias? I mean, what happens in this? You know, have you seen people? Because I, I know people that, that they start and then they pull back. I think I, yeah. I, I've often just seen people either get more rigid um, and their beliefs sometimes because they run back hard because they did it. I don't know. Tell me a little bit more. What have you seen? Well, no, I've seen that. Um, I've seen all kinds of things. Um, I've seen people deconstruct maybe one thing and then stop. Um, and then, and, and then that kind of frustrates me because I'm like, okay, wait a second. You deconstructed, you, you were able to sort of like look at your belief system t- to this point mm-hmm. and recognize these things were wrong. And then, but you just stop right there. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's other things that if that's true, you need to also consider. Yeah. And so I, I've run into that people that deconstruct and then just stop at a certain point. And, but I think most of the time that's a, that's a, the response is because of fear, mm-hmm. because it's scary. And yeah. you start to wonder if I, they recognize if I don't stop, <laughs> I might just lose my faith completely. And I've been there. My gosh, mm-hmm. I, I reached a, po- a point one time in my deconstruction where I felt like I came to the edge of the cliff. And honestly, if my wife, Wendy, hadn't just pulled me back, I think I might have lost my faith. It was scary. It was really scary. Mm-hmm. So I, I know I know what that's like. Um, I think sometimes the other thing I've seen is people who, de- who are deconstructing, but uh, they're sort of doing it in secret. They're sort of like undercover deconstructing. Um, and, and the reason why, and they're right about this, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, the reason why is that they, they assume is that if everyone found out, if my parents found out, if my, if my spouse found out, if my church found out, if my, my men's Bible study found out, whatever, you know, if, uh, if other people found out, I don't believe X, Y, and Z anymore, uh, I might lose those friendships. I might lose those relationships. And you know what? You're right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, that makes sense. It's, it's a protection mechanism to like, you might not want to make a big deal about this, right? But that in itself creates a whole lot of anxiety. Like I'm not being real. I can't be honest. I'm I'm, I'm fake. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, pastors go through that too. They end up preaching things they don't believe. Um, yes. So you know, and you feel like a hypocrite. So there's all kinds of things that deconstruction creates. Um, but I mean, ultimately, no matter who you are, deconstruction is. Well, I think one of the things that's painful is that it it if you really go through deconstruction and you all the way through it, you end up losing fellowship. You know, you get kicked out of your church or you just don't feel comfortable anymore, so you don't go anymore. But you lose that fellowship connection to community. You lose friendships. Um, you and I, I know people, and I have lost friends because uh, you don't believe that anymore. I can't. I can't be your friend anymore. So you lose friendships and you lose, and this is the crazy thing, but also painful. And I have also experienced this. You lose connection to family. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are family members who ignore you, don't invite you to birthday parties, uh, don't want to talk to you, avoid you. Again, over changes in your belief system. So deconstruction is, is really, really difficult and painful. And again, it can lead to, and I've seen this as well many times, 
people begin the deconstruction process and they just end up losing all faith completely. And that's really one of the things that I wanted to do in square one was to really help people through the deconstruction process and help them understand that, yes, there are some toxic things about your theology that are worth deconstructing. They're worth getting rid of. But I think you can do that without without getting rid of Christ, without rejecting Jesus, without rejecting your connection to God uh, in this, this spiritual connection that we all have with God. And so that's my hope is to sort of like whatever your deconstruction looks like, and it does look different for everybody, to just provide resources and tools for you to hang on to something. Like for all of us, there needs to be a foundational thing that we would say of all the things I'm going to deconstruct, this one thing here uh, I believe I can hold on to. And then once you figure out what that is, and that's different for everybody, I don't tell you what that should be, by the way. I help you figure out for you what that is. And then whatever you discover or you find, okay, this is my foundation. This is the this is my what I can begin to build on. Then to give you, again, some tools and resources, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. So I'm going to lay out in front of you sort of like this buffet of options and choices of possibilities that you could say, I'm going to try this. You know, this really works. Or, you know, what? I tried this and I hate it. I'm not going to do that again. Good. But I want you to figure out for yourself, what are the things that that really are spiritual practices that give you life, mm-hmm. that feed your soul, that that uh, encourage and nurture this connection you have with, with the divine and to give you a way to move forward in a reconstruction process. Mm-hmm. Well put. Well put. And I think I think that it, it's just important, too, because as we've been talking about, there's not a lot of stuff out here for people doing this. And so really, yeah. it just ends up being people leave out the back door uh, and yeah. leave everything <laughs> and just leave everything and keep going, um, yeah. which is a sad thing. So that's I, I appreciate you doing this. So. All right, we've we've been we've been deep and happy and sappy uh, for a little while. Um, so with this, Keith has agreed. He's agreed uh, to participate in this little game. Um, and here's how the game works. It's simply just this. It's Tomlin, Chris Tomlin. So I'm gonna read you some lyrics. So did, is this a Chris Tomlin lyrics or is it, are these Madonna? So we're trying to figure out <laughs> who's who did this. Okay. So, um, and there is nothing deep to this. This is just stupid. So do, do not worry. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's quite stupid. It's quite stupid. Um, but yes, I appreciate you, you uh, being willing to explain this. So here we go. All right. All right. Okay. There's a day that's drawing near when this darkness breaks to light and the shadows disappear. Uh, Madonna. Tomlin. That's a Chris Tomlin. Oh, I rise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, sometimes I know you can't. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I know. Another one, another one. Okay. Um, light up my life so blind I can't see. Is that Madonna? That is Madonna. Who's okay, that? Okay, there you go. Madonna, I didn't know who's that girl? There you go. Yes, yes. Okay. 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 Um, you try everything you can to escape the pain of life that you know when all else fails and you long to be something better than you are today. I gotta say that's Madonna. That was actually Tom. Oh no, that is Madonna. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, you're okay. right. That is that's Vogue. Yes, I'll keep going. Yeah, I know a place where you can get away. It's called the dance floor. Here's where that's for. Come on, Vogue. Yes, you got Vogue. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're right. You're right. You know what? Look up to that point. That was a great Christian lyric. And I know, the, I know. the answer, the answer is no, the dance floor. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> still, 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 maybe a good answer. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Go to dance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've I, I, I've heard a thousand I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night. See, I know that's Tomlin only because I know that song. Oh, okay, you got it. Yes, yes, good, good father. Yeah. And the last one, last one. Okay, last one. Here's for all the money that we don't have to give you. But don't uh, have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, when you read my mind, get down and discover me. I'm an open door. Let you come inside of me. Want, want, yeah, want to put your hands around around my neck? Gonna take you to a place that you will not forget. Dude, if that's Chris Tomlin, I'm I'm gonna be really shocked. It's it. There's a song called uh, "Touch My Ebenezer" by. No, I'm joking. I'm not, <laughs> no, no, no. It, that that's not Tomlin. That's Madonna. So yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, yes. So yes. Well done, Keith. Well done, Keith. You're you're still fun. you're still intact. You're still intact. Um, All right. Your, your theology is is still intact after this. Thing. <laughs> what I did? I miss one. I just missed I the think first just, one. Just missed one. Yeah, you're good. You were All good. Right. You were good on that one. Well done. All right. 
So to end this, I just wanted to ask you anything. Keith, uh, I'm a person that likes to buy stocking stuffers for my loved ones. Um, mm. Do you know of anything for people that may like to read or other things that they enjoy in stocking stuffers? I feel like this is a this is a leading question for me to recommend my books. Um, so if it's not, I guess I... <laughs> Oops. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Keith, I can't believe you just recommend your books like that. I know that's terrible, um, terrible. So self-promoting. Yeah. Uh, well, no, no. I've got. Uh, I have a. I have a series of books called the Jesus. I call it the Jesus Un series. Um, and I. What are, what are we up to now? Six books, I think, uh, in the series. I, I, I think so. Hold on. One, two, three. No, it's five. It's five. Right. My sixth book comes out in March. Okay. Uh, and look, I even I don't. I can't even keep up with it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so their books, are, it's called the Jesus on series. Um, they've done really well. I mean, Best-selling. I've gotten some really great feedback and reviews and things like that. Um, uh, they deal with, um, you know, things about like mixing faith and politics or how to read the scripture through the lens of Christ versus a flat Bible perspective. Um, how do, what do we understand about the way church should be uh, according to the New Testament model? Um, talk about the doctrine of hell. Um, and eternal torment and how basically it's not taught in the Bible. And also my most recent book, as you mentioned, about the second coming of Christ, um, which is Jesus Unexpected. Mm -hmm. And so the one coming out in March is Jesus Unforsaken. Ruxy Cavey just sent me the forward to that yesterday. And um, that one's about the atonement and penal substitutionary atonement theory. So, Well, it's exciting. So yes, if you want to find that, look, Keith Giles, you can find where? Amazon or... Most places they sell books, look up Keith Giles, and you've got plenty to choose from. Well, yeah, and you can also find Keith. uh, If people want to find you, Heretic Happy Hour is always a fun ride. Anything else? Yeah, Yeah. I I blog on Patheos uh, as well, so it's just my name, KeithGiles.com. It'll take you to my Patheos blog. Yeah, Heretic Happy Hour podcast. Uh, Yeah. And many others. Uh, Facebook and Twitter and even Instagram. Sure. Look me up. Well, awesome, Keith. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you being on the show. Hey, Stuart, this was a blast. Thank you so much. Ah, lots of fun with Mr. Keith Giles today. And as we move towards closing out the show, I, I want to bring up something that, that I was reminded of recently that I think that we all kind of need to be reminded of a little bit because uh, I had a friend of mine that was going through a, a bit of a rough patch because his 2020 has been one long, rough patch. And as I was sitting and talking with him and going through a lot of just the collective trauma that's been this last year, it was it was a good time for us to to kind of talk about what we've been through and and not just to talk about what the crap of this last year. But I think that we also need to look to a place of being able to say, oh my gosh, we made it through. Now, this year may have been very difficult in so many myriad of ways. But at the end of the day, we're here. We made it to this point. Some of us may have lost people that we love. Some of us may have lost our jobs. Some of us may have lost faith in a lot of of things this year. But you're here. You're breathing. You still have a pulse. There is still a future ahead of you. And that is a reminder that we need to celebrate. We need to celebrate the fact that we're still standing. Celebrate the fact that we have not let 2020 completely crush us because there is new things on the horizon. There is a better tomorrow. And hopefully, hopefully we will be a part of making that better tomorrow. Hopefully we'll be a part of making someone else's tomorrow a better place. So as I like to do at the end of all of our shows, I send you out into this world with the holiest amount of grace and snark and peace. Go make a difference in whatever big way or small way that you can. But do not forget. Do not forget that there is more and that there are better days ahead and that you have made it to this point. So celebrate in that. Because guess what? I'm out of here. I'll catch you guys again next week. Peace.